doesn't matter what you want. Now you can give you new people, new ideas, turn the corner. Well, I think what's really exciting is that uh, our leadership team has um, some long-time party members and some brand new party members. And even with the State Central Committee, we saw an infusion of, of new folks and also uh, some, some people who have been around for quite a long time. The uh, National Committee man is George Ariosha. I'm thrilled about that. Uh, the National Committee woman is J.D. Nielsen. She's relatively new to politics. Uh, I am, uh, relatively speaking, new to politics as well. And so I think we've got a good mix, and that's the key. Uh, it's not about um, uh, it's not about an overthrow. This is about a long-term transition and being thoughtful about it, and making sure <coughs> that we know um, where we came from, but also um, have enough momentum to go into the future. Well, for those of us who remember 40 years ago, everyone was protesting outside the Chicago Democratic National Convention, and now we have a new generation that I've talked to here that wants to do it from the inside. Yeah, well, that's an interesting insight. I, I think you know. Uh, that we're going to avoid uh, those kinds of fights, both locally and nationally. I'm very confident that um, whenever the primary season wraps up, and whatever our divisions, I mean, one of the things I mentioned is that, that it's not the Clinton-Obama thing only. It's House Senate, it's pro-super ferry, anti-super ferry, it's all neighbor island uh, uh, versus Oahu. There are all kinds of uh, ways that people attempt to divide us. But um, uh, one of the things that's exciting about this election cycle is that we're not paying so much attention to our divisions, we're paying attention to the main thing, which is turning the page on eight years of George Bush's bad policies. Ryan, you're 36? 36? I'm 35. 34. Are you the youngest? The Democratic youngest? Party chairman locally? I don't know. Where do you see the party in four years, Ryan? Uh, hopefully we'll be strong, uh, well organized, uh, well funded and uh, importantly with a base of funders that are the members of the party and uh, we hope to retain all 54,000 of those members and keep them engaged. Now there are going to be uh, some members who continue as grassroots volunteers and the core that makes up the organizers and there are other members who will just be happy to remain members and so we got to reach out to sort of both levels of membership. The people who just are pleased to identify themselves as Democrats and also those who really want to work you know, day in and day out. Talked about using technology to do that. Can you elaborate on that? What do you mean by that? Well, I, I think the, uh, the, the Clinton and Obama campaigns have both shown uh, a, a skill with technology that's unprecedented. They've, they've obviously raised a tremendous amount of money and been able to organize uh, uh, the grassroots. I mean, it, everybody talks about the money that came through the internet, but the other thing that came through the internet, both for uh, Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama, is grassroots organizing. And they are actually assembling in real life, not just on the internet, as a result of using uh, their websites as a tool. And so we've got a long way to go before the Democratic Party's website is, is that viable of a tool, but certainly we should take some of those lessons and apply them to the local party. Okay. Oh, well, we're, uh, we're thrilled. You know, um, Anel Amaral is someone who I've always had a lot of respect for. And um, so uh, it was actually a tough race for both of us. I think we have a lot of work on for each other. But I'm thrilled to be the chair of the party. Uh, and I think that we've got a lot of momentum right now. We're unified, we're motivated, we're energized to make sure that after eight years of George Bush, that we nominate and elect a Democratic president. So, uh, Brian, uh, I'm shooting this for YouTube news, and I've also been Twittering today's events, so I've been beating most of the uh, media to, uh, to the press today. What would you say to the young voters, and how are you going to be able to use alternative media to reach out to new Democrats? Well, I, um, I encourage everybody to go to the Democratic Party website, mm -hmm. and also I would encourage everybody to be patient as we upgrade it. Okay. We know we've got some work to do, uh, but it's still a reasonably good tool. Um, we want their participation. Mm -hmm. um, they can go to hawaiidemocrats.org uh, and, and participate in this election. You know, this is, this is one of the most historic elections in a long time. We want their involvement. And given your knowledge of technology, will you be turning to on-island or off-island vendors to provide these technologies to the party? I had not thought about that question at all. You think you do the favoritism to our on-island vendors? I have no, I, that's just something I'm going to have to look at and okay. see um, who we currently have and what we ought to be doing. Excellent. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Brian. Why are we starting with this? Why aren't we starting with those where there is limited flexibility so we can still re respond to a fair election? Let's um, hang on a second. My understanding is that the, the campaigns 
in collaboration with each other, by the way, outside, are looking through lists, and when you talk about, when I mean, you're right that the campaigns get to sift through the, all of the uh, candidates, hang on one second. The campaigns get to sift through the candidates, and, um, and sometimes it's a two-person race, sometimes it's a, a six-person race. But through that process, um, that's where both campaigns are committed to complying with the affirmative action plan. So, um, I, you know, I didn't want to get into it because I think it is, um, uh, we could argue about that all day, but I don't think that's quite accurate to say that this is the only time for the body to um, exercise its obligation to comply with the affirmative action plan. It's not. Um, we will have, both, the, both campaigns are totally committed to that. And, you know, we were looking at the gender balance, and just to be honest, we were saying, look, it may have to be that if, um, if, if it goes in a certain direction, then we may have to have, you know, the last five be females, or the last, you know. So we sort of, we are watching that very carefully. Um, okay. I, I yes, I hold on, hold on one second. One at a time, I'm not, I don't know how you normally do it, but I don't allow interruptions. Yes, Ms. Chen. Uh, uh, with uh, Ms. Emerald's uh, question concerning uh, this particular delegate, if it is that there is an imbalance of male to female, why don't we move this to the last? I mean, no. I don't understand we why. Have we, don't have to, we don't have that kind of discretion. That's up we have to do it in this order. That's why. Yes, that's why. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Okay, I think we're going to ask people to read all the names one more time. I'll read all the names one more time so you can just read them and make your note on your paper. Joanne Adams is a candidate. You have not withdrawn, right? I withdrew. withdrew. Okay. Uh, James Burns is a candidate. Woody Chang is a candidate. Leonard Halkersham. Philman Lee. Carolyn Mossman. And Jennifer Savas. Okay? So I'll ask people to stand. Do it in alphabetical order. All those in favor of James Burns' exposition, please stand. Okay, the votes are as follows. James Burns, 31. Woody Chang, 2. Leonard Havisham, 2. Thurman Lee, 0. Carolyn Mossman, 1. Jennifer Sabas, 28. Yeah. 